The 10 Biggest Architectural Fails Number 10. The Aon Center Standard Oil Building The Aon Center, previously known as the Standard Oil Building, had a multi-million dollar construction floor. The Aon Center was designed by architect Edward Durrell Stone, and they decided to cover the entire building with Italian Carrara marble. The luxurious and expensive material made it look like a beautiful building, but it was not meant to last. Carrara marble is much thinner than most building material, and a year after its completion in 1973, a bunch of marble slabs had fallen off the building and crashed into the roof of the Prudential Center right nearby. The marble was cracking and giving out all over the exterior until it was decided that they would redo the entire facade of the building. Refacing the building with granite cost more than $80 million. Number 9. The John Hancock Tower the John Hancock Tower is a 60-story skyscraper in Boston that was known for attempting to seriously injure pedestrians. The building was designed by the IM Pay and Partners architectural firm and finished in 1976. The building was minimalist and distinct and received a lot of praise from the architectural community, but it had a bunch of problems. Probably the biggest problem was that windows would just fall out and crash into the sidewalk. Luckily, no one was injured by these windows, but the window holes were covered by plywood because of how many many windows were missing. All 10,000 of the windows were replaced at a cost of $5 million. The John Hancock Tower was also pretty bad at absorbing wind gusts. Most skyscrapers are built to withstand wind gusts at higher stories and reduce the swaying of the building. But the Hancock swayed so much that people on the upper floors regularly complained of motion sickness. Number 8. The Playground at Pier 1, Brooklyn Bridge the three futuristic looking dome structures at the Pier 1 playground near the Brooklyn Bridge have managed to get a pretty bad rep for themselves. In 2010, they came into attention because although they were meant to be climbed on, they were built out of steel. The steel domes would become superheated underneath the sun and be unsafe to touch. Parents and frequent visitors to the park experimented and found that you could literally fry an egg on them. After an infant seriously burned themselves by touching it, authorities finally covered them up with a tarp and fenced them off with plans of completely removing them. Who decided that metal pane orbs would be a good addition to a playground anyway? Number 7. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was a suspension bridge that connected the city of Tacoma with the Kitsap Peninsula. It was opened on July 1st, 1940, but it had a very interesting quirk. Because of the materials they used to cut on construction costs, the bridge couldn't stay in place and would swing violently in strong winds. The issue was so noticeable that that even the construction workers nicknamed the bridge Galloping Gertie because being on it felt like riding a bucking horse. Only a few months later, the bridge collapsed under a 40 mile per hour wind. It went from the third longest suspension bridge to a pile of rubble in the water within three months. Number six, the Lotus Riverside Complex. The Lotus Riverside was a residential apartment complex in Shanghai. It's made up of 11 13-story rectangular buildings. One fateful morning in June 2009, one of the buildings toppled completely over on its side. It fell straight over and just barely missed a nearby building. The way they are shaped and constructed, if it had hit, it would have created the world's most destructive domino effect. The thing that caused this wasn't an architectural glitch in the building, but rather the foundation that it was built on. Right below the building, workers were excavating earth to create an underground garage. The soil was dumped into a landfill near a creek, which caused the water to seep into the ground. All of this combined turned the foundation beneath the complex to mud, leading to the collapse. Number 5. The Ray and Maria Starter Center The Ray and Maria Starter Center is an academic complex at MIT that was designed by Frank Gehry. It was opened in 2004 and received lots of positive attention for its unique and mind-bending angles and structure facades. However, the building has since been riddled with so many problems that MIT has sued Frank Gehry's firm for it. The $300 million building had drainage issues that caused cracks in the walls, mold grew on the brick exterior, and huge, dangerous icicle daggers hung from the roof. The repairs cost the school more than $1.5 million. Number 4. The Tropicana Field Stadium the Tropicana Field is home to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, a major league baseball team based in St. Petersburg, Florida. The problem with the field isn't the actual field, but what hangs above it. The ceiling has four catwalks and several lights hanging down that, as you can imagine, get in the way of baseballs that are hit into the air. Just in case you don't know, a major facet of baseball is trying to hit the ball as high and as far as possible. 
so you can potentially hit a home run. The structures at the stadium often get in the way and block potential home run balls. Sometimes a light will get hit and cause a dangerous rain of super hot glass to fall into the field. Maybe next time you design a baseball stadium, consider not building a roof. Number three, the walkie talkie skyscraper. The walkie talkie skyscraper in London was an architectural novel acclaimed for its slightly concave facade and towering height. However, there was something else about it that became much more infamous. It's a 525 feet tall heat ray. The concave shape of the building focuses and reflects the sun's rays in just a way that it magnifies them and burns everything on the street around it. The heat rays reflecting off the building have been found to fry doorways, shatter tiles and heat the ground up to 243 degrees Fahrenheit. It's even melted cars down to their body frames. Number 2. The Sampoon Department Store the Sampung department store was initially meant to be a four-floor office building, but was later converted into a department store. To do this, they, of course, removed support columns of the elevators and relocated an air conditioning unit to the roof. Obviously, the result was not good. The structural instability caused the building to collapse completely in 1995, trapping 1,500 people and killing 502. And now for number one. But first, be sure to subscribe for new videos every day. Skyscraper on Stilt. When an architect named William Le Messurier wanted to build a skyscraper in the 1970s, his ideal construction site was occupied by a Lutheran church that was completely unwilling to move. So instead of demolishing the church, he decided to build the skyscraper in the air right above it. The Citigroup's centre tower is a 59-storey building that has a foundation made of stilts, so the building is right above the church. However, as you might think, a skyscraper on stilts can have some pretty dangerous structural problems if you're not careful. The whole building was made with bolted joints rather than welded joints, which made it super susceptible to being toppled by a strong enough storm. So did Citigroup warn everyone in the area that the biggest building on the block could come crashing down at any moment? No. They just secretly welded all the joints together and prayed to all their gods that it wouldn't come crashing down before then. If it had come down, it could have ended the lives of around 200,000 people. <laughs>